Lo mostraron e inmediatamente saqué el arma y lo maté. Dos tiros en la cabeza. Imagine a hitman who admitted to killing 300 for the drug lord Pablo Escobar, but made it out of jail and died by natural cause? In the dark and treacherous underworld of the Colombian drug trade, a name that struck fear into the hearts of even the most hardened criminals that existed. The deadliest enforcer of the infamous Medellin cartel, responsible for countless lives taken without remorse. Here is the chilling story of Pablo Escobar's hitman, John Jairo Velázquez Vázquez, a.k.a. Popeye. Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria y nosotros del cartel de Medellín matamos 50.000 personas. Matamos dos ministros de justicia, herimos a otro ministro de justicia, matamos a un candidato a la presidencia de la república. Matamos periodistas, magistrados, 540 policías, herimos 800 policías. Colocamos 270 bombas, pero teníamos una bandera. Tumbar la extradición de colombianos hacia los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica. The hitman allegedly murdered more than 300 people and has been involved in the killings of 3,000 others. Who is Popeye? John Jairo Velázquez Vázquez was born on April 15, 1962, in Yarumal, 50 miles from Medellín, in northern Colombia. He went to the University of North Barranquilla, after which he entered the school of NCOs of the Colombian Navy. He was then transferred to the police cadet school General Santander, where he attended only one semester. He resigned, he told RT in 2017, because the Navy only had old wooden boats and no warships. I only wanted to shoot, kill and get adrenaline kicks, he said. He started working for Mr. Escobar when he was around 17. He said Mr. Escobar was a genius, an evil genius, but a genius anyway. He was 18 when he killed his first victim, a bus driver in Medellin. He dropped off the mother of a friend of Pablo Escobar, and she had a fall, and he didn't help her. He left her there and she died. So when this Pablo's friend got some money, he asked Pablo Escobar to help him get revenge on this driver. He did some research, found the guy, and killed him. Velasquez said he felt nothing at all after killing him. It was then that I realized I had a stomach for crimes, he said. In the early 1980s, Escobar helped form Los Extraditables to wage war against the Colombian state to prevent the extradition of drug traffickers to the United States. By then, Velasquez had become Escobar's most loyal hitman and was heading operations that included contract killings, car bombings, and kidnappings. Velasquez and other hitmen would each kill 5, 6, even 12 people a day, which included policemen, judges, presidential candidates, rivals, and civilians. We started planting bombs to kill government ministers, journalists, and judges. We'd kidnap politicians so they'd amend the Constitution and stop the Colombians being extradited, he said. He organized the kidnapping of Attorney General Carlos Mara Hoyos and Mayor Andres Pastrana Arango, who would later become the Colombian president in 1998. Despite the terror, presidential candidate Luis Carlos Galán proved unwavering in his support of extradition, and in 1989, he was assassinated. I felt satisfaction after killing Galán, Velázquez said. Today, I realize it was a horrible mistake. Cesar Gaviria became Galán's successor and immediately became a target of Escobar's hitman. On November 27, 1989, a bomb was planted onto Avianca Flight 203, which Gaviria was meant to be on. But he wasn't, and 107 passengers died when the plane exploded in midair. Some believe John Jairo Velasquez organized the attack, but he denies it. Instead, he blames Carlos Mario Urquijo, another of Escobar's ruthless hitmen, and the DAS, the now defunct Colombian secret police. Velasquez followed Escobar's orders without question, even killing Escobar's ex girlfriend, Wendy Chavarriaga Gill, for becoming an informant. At the time, she was also Velasquez's girlfriend, whom he calls the love of my life. One day, the boss calls me in and plays a tape for me. It was Senorita Wendy, chatting with a police captain. Velasquez could not bring himself to kill her personally, so he arranged to meet her at a restaurant and sent in his crew. He recalls phoning the restaurant to talk to his girlfriend and ordering his men to shoot her as soon as she answered, which they did. When he heard the two shots, he felt a rush of love and anger inside of him. Police bore the brunt of the Medellin cartel's brutality. Escobar ordered his hitmen to kill police indiscriminately. According to Velasquez, they killed 540 police and wounded 800 more. 
No other criminal organization in the world has ever confronted the police that way, he said. In turn, the police issued a 2.7 billion Colombian peso bounty for Escobar and 100 million Colombian pesos for each of his four key hitmen, which included Velazquez. In 1991, a truce of sorts was called when Escobar agreed to go to prison for five years in return for the abolishment of a planned extradition treaty with the United States. Velazquez joined him along with some of Escobar's other lieutenants. From the beginning, Escobar had control. The prison called La Catedral was built to his specifications by his engineers. From inside, it was business as usual. He carried on trafficking, but then, after he had men killed inside the supposed prison, La Catedral, the Colombian government decided it was time he was incarcerated inside a real prison. But what the authorities did not realize is that Escobar had the breaker switch to turn off the 10,000 volt perimeter fence hidden in the wall of his cell. After only 13 months in La Catedral, Escobar and some of his men escaped. Velasquez recalls how they left after 11 p.m., walking past the army on the hills. We were listening at the army's radio transmissions, and we walked right by them. We had our own rifles, and they didn't hear us. And the guard tower spotlights were moving back and forth, but we got away. Mr. Escobar was killed 16 months later in a rooftop shooting in Medellin, his hometown, surrounded by 500 police officers and soldiers. For me, Escobar was a terrorist, a drug dealer, and a kidnapper, but he was also my friend, Mr. Velasquez said. He treated me with kindness and respect. In prison, Velasquez heard that Escobar had been shot dead. I was frozen. My soul cried, but I didn't cry, he recalled. The war hardens you, and so does prison life so you don't really cry. For me, it's just been war and prison. Following the death of Pablo Escobar in December 1993, the Medellin cartel's power and influence began to wane, and many of its members faced capture, prosecution, or death. John Jairo Velasquez Vasquez, better known as Popeye, found himself in a precarious position as the death of his boss and protector exposed him to law enforcement and rival criminal groups. Velasquez made the decision to surrender to Colombian authorities. In 1992, just two months on the run and before Escobar's death, he turned himself in and was arrested. His surrender was part of a broader wave of demobilization among members of the Medellin cartel, many of whom sought to take advantage of the government's offer of reduced sentences and favorable treatment in exchange for cooperation. As a result of his cooperation and confession, Velasquez was sentenced to prison, where he served a 23-year sentence. Despite the severity of his crimes, his sentence was significantly reduced due to his status as a cooperating witness and the terms of his surrender agreement with the government. They tried to kill me seven times with poison, bullets, and knives, poison knives. In jail, they have special tricks, smuggling pipes in their rectums, plastic pipes with daggers in them. Before stabbing someone, they'd wipe the knife in feces, and then they stab. The victims die of terrible infection. I'm a professional killer, I killed for money, he said in Escobar's Hitman, a 2017 documentary on the Russian television network RT. I also killed out of love and respect for Pablo Escobar. After his release on parole in 2014, he achieved celebrity status by posting dozens of videos on his YouTube channel, called Popeye Arrepentido, Remorseful Popeye, which had more than 1.2 million subscribers. He also directed a movie about his life, wrote two books, and hosted tours of Medellin. In some videos, he would visit the graves of his victims and recount how he had murdered them. Velasquez was robbed after his release. He said two men on motorcycles pulled up beside him on Monday while he drove his truck, pointed guns at him, and robbed him of gold, Cartier glasses, and his cell phone in Medellin's El Poblado neighborhood, but nobody lost his life that day. Legal troubles also marked Velasquez's life after his release from prison. In December 2017, he was arrested again on charges of extortion and criminal conspiracy. He faced additional charges while in prison and remained a contentious and divisive figure in Colombia. John Jairo Velasquez Vasquez's life, after a complex mix of public engagement, controversy, and legal challenges, characterized his release. His attempts to find redemption and redefine his identity were met with varying degrees of acceptance and resistance. And in December 2017, authorities found Velasquez at a luxurious birthday party of drug trafficker Juan Carlos Mesa Vallejo, also known as Tom. 
Vallejo had been a drug trafficker for 30 years and had accumulated a fortune almost as large as Pablo Escobar's. The prosecutor's office said Velasquez revoked his probation. Velasquez said otherwise. Velasquez was transferred for health reasons from Valle du Par Maximum Security Prison to La Picota Prison in Bogota on December 23, 2019, after being admitted to the hospital for a month. Velasquez was diagnosed with terminal esophageal cancer on January 8, 2020, and was given only a few months to live. He died on February 6, 2020 in Bogota, Colombia at the age of 57. Mr. Velasquez's notoriety illustrated the ambivalent relationship that Medellin had with Mr. Escobar and the crimes committed by his cartel, even decades after his death. While the city seems determined to overcome its grim past, many residents have a tolerant attitude toward the tourism it attracts. Thank you for stopping by to watch. Subscribe to the channel and post your video recommendations in the comments area if you want us to do more videos like this.